Hey guys, it's me, Amelia. I am back after a short hiatus that I didn't mean to take. I don't really have an excuse or a reason. I just didn't feel like looking at myself, so I didn't. We're also here with my Lucy. That's my best friend in the whole world. Yeah, she's my best friend. Look how beautiful she is. And I also got into a dumb reading slot, like I freaking do almost every month, which is so annoying. So, in October, I only read nine books, and I was hoping to read more than 12 because I think 12 is what I read in September. So for November, we're not setting a goal. Subconsciously, there's a goal set, but we're not going to say it out loud because I don't want to jinx it. Before I get started, I do want to say a few things. One, if you'll notice, my hair is different. This was an accident. I meant to buy red copper hair dye, but I accidentally bought just plain red, which is fine. I've had red hair every year of my life since I was 15, so once it fades, I will be getting hopefully the correct hair dye this time. I just accidentally grabbed the wrong one. Two, I have started a Twitch channel. I haven't started streaming yet. I probably will this week, so I will include a link if you want to join me. No pressure, but it'll just be me playing games like Animal Crossing, Breath of the Wild, Grand Theft Auto, preferably the old ones. Skyrim, a bunch of older games that I want to play again. And you know what? Since you're already here, and there's this big red button down there, why don't you just click it and you can stay a while and we can be all cozy. By the way, this is a huge scarf that I actually use as a blanket. So let's get into the books I read in October. So I'm going to skip over the first few books that I read because I have a blog from the beginning of the month where I read all those books and it's my Stephen King 24 hour vlog. So I'll link it somewhere like in the card thing or down below. So we'll just start with what I read after those Stephen King books. First book I read was Someone Who Knows by Sherry Lapina. This book is set in this neighborhood and you're specifically focusing on this one family. This mom finds out that her teenage son has been breaking into people's homes at night and snooping on their computers. Like that's all he's doing. He's not stealing. He's not doing anything. He's just snooping on the computers when they're not home. And of course they're freaking out because that's a crime and they don't know what to do about it. So behind their back, she sends two anonymous letters to people's homes. She leaves them on their porch, I think. And um, saying like, I'm so sorry, my son broke into your home and snooped on your computer. He'll be properly punished for this. And that's basically it. And then it comes out a couple of days later that someone in the neighborhood's wife has been murdered. Well, that looks fishy because now her son is tied to that home because of course that's one of the homes he broke into. And so the story is trying to figure out who murdered this woman but along the way, you're going through everybody in the neighborhood and all these secrets start to spill out. I found this book very addictive and the whole time it's another one of those books where you're like, you know the answer, like you're so sure you know the answer and then the next page, your answer gets disproven. So it was one of the only thrillers that actually thrilled me, which doesn't happen that often. And I really loved it, five out of five. Highly recommend if you love thrillers and if you love puzzles. The next book I read is The Companion by Katie Allender. It's about this teenage girl who was in an accident with her family and she's the only one that survived. <laughs> so she gets sent to an orphanage and one of her dad's friends from back in college hears about this and he decides to adopt her and she never met him or anything. Comes to find out he's a super successful wealthy family so she gets to the house and of course she's kind of uncomfortable because this is the exact opposite of what she knows comes to find out that she's actually there and she's actually been adopted to be a companion for their teenage daughter because a few weeks or months ago i can't remember she suddenly went catatonic so she doesn't speak she doesn't express herself in any way she doesn't do anything she eats and sleeps and uses the bathroom but she needs help with all of it so they live in this huge freaking mansion but they give her this like little closet of a room off of their daughter's room so she can be there as a companion well of course i mean she lives in this beautiful secluded mansion so she wants to go explore so she starts to find suspicious things and she starts to 
learn and hear suspicious things. There's weird things like they constantly keep telling her like, oh, we can't find the Wi-Fi password. Oh, we lost it. Oh, it doesn't work. And then eventually they tell her they just don't want her using Wi-Fi because they don't believe in that. So she's not allowed to have any type of life. And she realizes maybe this family isn't as nice as they pretend to be. I think there's something fishy. Another one of those puzzling books. Like a few parts were predictable, but not that you knew instantly, if that makes sense. Um, and I think that's okay for there to be predictable parts sometimes. I did give it four out of five because the epilogue ruined it. Like, I understand why they included an epilogue, but it should have been totally different. The epilogue leaves you with more questions than answers. Like, there's still so much you don't know. So that brought down a star for me because I think the epilogue should have included more or been totally different or excluded altogether. The next book I read was Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. This is a book about this woman whose daughter went missing, I think 10 or 15 years ago. I think it's 10 years ago. And of course she's never been the same again. So one day she's in this cafe and she meets this man named Floyd and they start dating and going out and very quickly she starts staying the night at his house and they're like all over each other. And she meets his nine year old daughter named Poppy and she's freaked out because Poppy is literally a spitting image of her daughter that went missing 10 years ago, Ellie. Which by the way, Ellie was 15 at the time. So this arises everything, like it brings everything back to the surface again because there was never any answers, there was never any closure, never any clues, never any leads. She starts to wonder what really happened to my daughter. It is um, a very beautiful and sad story and messed up and you're most likely not going to expect what happened. Um, of course, you end up going back from the mom's point of view and then you go back in time to Ellie's point of view when the whole incident happened. And you'll especially connect to the mom. If you've ever suffered grief or loss yourself, um, you relate so much more and it becomes that much more heartbreaking. I gave this five out of five. I thought it was a beautiful, wonderful book and I highly recommend it to everybody. Next book I read was Tell No One by Harlan Coben. <sighs> this book I gave three out of five. This book is about Beck and Elizabeth and one day they're at the lake celebrating their anniversary. Elizabeth gets out of the lake. She starts screaming. He tries to get out and he gets hit in the head and knocked out. She disappears. They found her body a few days after that she disappeared. And so he's believed she's been dead all these years. But then suddenly he gets this message at work that leads him to believe that Elizabeth is still alive. And he's not allowed to tell anyone that he's receiving these messages or communication. So he doesn't. He starts to go around asking people like questions again. He's not telling them what happened, but he's just asking them questions about Elizabeth's life and stuff. And then these people end up dead. So there becomes a manhunt for him because obviously it looks like he's the one that murdered them. This book is kind of predictable. Like it's still um, an intriguing read, but it's pretty predictable. And I had to give it three out of five, mainly because the racism and the microaggressions make you want to vomit. Like, I was making this face the whole time, like, what the F? Like, this author put every black stereotype he could put into this book, mainly into one character, and it was incredibly cringy. Like, it, it made it so unenjoyable to read. If he hadn't had done that, it would have been a really good book. Next is The Chain by Adrian McKenzie. So this book is about The Chain. The Chain is this thing where a family kidnaps someone else's loved one in order to get their loved one back because their loved one has been kidnapped. They pay a ransom, they kidnap someone else's loved one, can be anybody just as long as it's love, but it always ends up being a child. It's been going on for years and it keeps happening and this one woman gets selected and her teenage daughter gets taken from her and her daughter's like the love of her life and it's just her and her daughter that live together. But she's not allowed to tell anybody what's happening. And now she has to go pay this ransom somehow and she has to go kidnap someone else's loved one and she does she kidnaps someone else's child and it's about how the things a parent will do for their child it's also about uncovering the chain because no one's ever done it before because they end up getting murdered and i'm not going to give away much more than that i gave this four out of five it's a very crazy interesting book like 
it's really sad it's really messed up it's really i don't know it's like it's very interesting and never like anything i've read before at the end the whole time you're like like yelling at the book like you know just rooting for them like it's sort of a crazy scene at the end um i gave it four out of five though because it wasn't my favorite book in the world i say five stars for a book that i would read over and over still highly recommend a really good book and you'll get through it really quick the last book i read was girl made of stars by ashley herring blake this book is about this girl who has a twin brother and they're like soulmates they're best friends they love each other to death they like you know they're twins twins have that thing well one day it comes out that her best friend who has been dating her brother owen her twin brother she claims she's been raped by owen and she knows hannah her best friend and she knows hannah would never lie about this and that's her best friend of course she needs to be there for her but also owen's with her twin brother her soulmate she thought she knew him she doesn't want to believe that he would ever do that so the story is about her being caught in between because she wants to believe both of them but she wants to believe neither of them and she doesn't know what to do and this is going to change everything forever a very beautiful book um, a great take on rape culture and how women are treated when they claim these things have happened to them in the book something comes up from her past and makes her realize what happened to her in the past was wrong and bad and that it's not something women should have to keep to themselves or should have to prove it's a very beautiful sad book it's a very moving book and I've never read any book like this and I highly recommend it to everybody I mean there's queer characters non-binary you know takes on feminism and things like that it's a beautiful book and i highly recommend five out of five stars so that is every book i read this month please let me know if you read any of them or if any of them sound interesting i mean i had a pretty good month most of the books i loved thank you guys so much for watching it means the world to me and i hope to see you soon because I am still behind on my Goodreads goal, so hopefully there will be a vlog of me catching up on that. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Bye! Mm -hmm.